So now people were interested. Uh, I said Marlon Scully is the um, yeah uh, is the author of this experiment, and this experiment was later uh, in Berkeley performed. And they were interested in the following thing: try to mark a photon to see which of the two reunited photons went which way. Since the photons are reunited again, they are like at the beginning one big photon you can say and you do not know which photon went which way but maybe you are interested in so this would be an analogy with our balls um, with our tennis balls a device could be uh, implanted somewhere that it paints let's say a red spot on one table tennis ball so there's some kind uh, of device which lets drop a red spot on one of the two uh, let's say the lower tennis ball so that later, when they are reunited, you can determine which of the two went uh, where. But now, a strange thing happens. The photons feel observed and their pact no longer holds. In physics, this is done not by a, a spot uh, painting, but by so-called polarization filters, which mark the photon in a special physical way. And if observed, then suddenly all four of the possibilities I mentioned can now occur. So not only reunited photons are there, but single photons, former twin photons, are at the upper and the lower detector detected at the same time. The result is all four possibilities mentioned above can occur. I've just said this. Now a new idea comes. Delete the mark of this photon the following way. Place a deleting device in front of both detectors, behind the semi-transparent uh, uh, mirror, but uh, in front of both detectors. And this device has the following property. The device deletes the mark if there is a mark there, if there exists one, and it does nothing if there is no mark. So after this uh, cleaning thing here, then uh, there are no marks and there is the information which photon went which way is deleted. Such a thing is called quantum erase. Now, uh, let's consider our analogy again. This means that a washing machine is put in front of the detectors which will remove the red spot if it is there. If there's nothing, then cleaner than clean couldn't be. So it stays and if there were a red spot, and then it's clean. And it's important to say that the decision if this clearing device is switched on can be made after the photons have passed the semi-transparent mirror. So we wait until the photons are in front of our washing machine and then we decide if we would wash or clean or not. So this, can, this decision can be made after the photons have passed the semi-transparent mirror. This is very important. So, and now what happens? This is the very, very strange result here in quantum physics. And this can be experimentally verified. I said it uh, already. The, this reunification pact, so the love between uh, Lee and Tina, this pact is taking place again. So this means now, if these washing machines here are switched on, then you only will have the two possibilities that both photons are detected at the upper or both photons together reunited are detected at the lower detector, but no longer the two other possibilities that one single twin photon is located at the upper and at the lower uh, device at the same time. So this cleaning processes erases not only the information, but it reenacts this pact that they you reunite at this semi-transparent mirror. But the very strange thing about this is how did the photons know when they pass here the semi-transparent mirror that later in time when they are on their way somewhere to the detector is switching on or not this cleaning device. Normally they couldn't know because it's your free choice, your free will to do so, to switch on and off these uh, devices. So the question very simply is how could they know? How could they know if you switch on or off the cleaning device? So this leads to only two possibilities. Either 
the photons can foresee the future because they know in advance what you will do, switching on or off this cleaning device, so that they can reunite or not. Or the decision to switch on the cleaning device influences the past, namely the past at the time point when the two photons uh, uh, arrive at the semi-transparent mirror. And now, last not least, the uh, interesting thing, this whole device can be stretched to cosmological uh, dimensions because um, there, and this is, uh, has been done, there is a big um, Milky Way kind of system, a big galaxy somewhere, and behind this galaxy is a quasar, and you know maybe a quasar emits light in a pulsating way, so it's flash, flashing, kind of flashing. And this uh, big galaxy is working like a kind of graviton, uh, gravitational lens, this means it bends the light beams around itself and detectors on Earth can detect now this light. And here we have a similar situation like in the Scully experiment, which means the detectors or filters could be put in front of the detectors in a way that uh, it determines if one photon came along either right or the left side, this is the particle behavior, or it comes along both sides, this is kind of wave behavior at the same time. But, but the problem here is how could the photons millions of years back know that one day on planet Earth someone makes an experiment that determines which way to go? So here we influence the past not only a few milliseconds uh, uh, but away, but the past millions of years away. So this is the question and I hope you enjoyed this small part and we go on now with another theme.